Professor Tullio de Oliveira of UKZN has been named Time Magazine's inaugural 2024 Time 100 Health List, a new annual collection that honours the 100 people who have had the greatest impact on the world health this year. Professor Tullio is a prominent genomic scientist. He's the director of Stellenbosch University's Centre for Epidemic Response and Innovation and the director of the KwaZulu-Natal Research Innovation and Sequencing Platform at UKZN. Now, many of you would remember Professor Tullio as the expert at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic who led a team of researchers and scientists that discovered beta, rather the beta variant of COVID. He joins us live this evening via Zoom. Professor, good evening and thank you very much for your time. Firstly, congratulations. Congratulations. What does this award, which has a selection panel of international network editors and respected thought leaders, mean to you? Uh, uh, yeah, good evening and good evening to all your viewers. Yeah. So, of course, that, that we, we are very proud of that, that recognition, especially because it's not the first recognition from time. Uh, Less uh, two years ago, I uh, was also listed in the Time 100 most influential people, and then to have a second recognition as an uh, influential person in health is really important because that's exactly what South Africa needs. We need to be recognized for advanced science and technology, and not only for like bad news and crime and corruption. So it's, I think that's a fantastic news, not only to me, but uh, to the whole team of researchers in South Africa about being recognized for very advanced science and technology. Mm, indeed, it is important that we are recognized for great work, such as the work that you have done over the years. But, Professor, just to ask you, what drives you and your ambition to constantly be innovative in the space of science? <laughs> uh, so, yes, that, that, that's a complex question. But to answer in simple terms, what drives our ambition is really to save lives. So as the COVID pandemic decreased, we pivot again to help to respond to our two biggest epidemics, HIV, AIDS, and TB, but also to create a program that would be a global program led by South Africa to deal with pathogens amplified by climate change. Because one thing that we realize that's going to be some of our biggest challenge in the next decades is this combination of climate changing really extreme events and then emergence of pathogens. For example, we just finished work with colleagues in Malawi, in Mozambique, in Cameroon on this awful, this worst cholera outbreak that happened in the last few decades. Mm -hmm. So now that COVID has receded somewhat, then you joined this particular team. Uh, I take it this is the one with a Welcome Sanga Institute. Am I correct? So, so, so we, we run a number of large uh, network programs. So, for example, even during the COVID pandemic, we raised large international money yeah, and we hosted 510 fellows from 48 African countries. So that scientists that came to spend weeks, months, or years in both at UKZN and Stellenbosch to learn that and take back home. Yeah. And that's what we use to respond to all these epidemics. Yeah. So we are constantly yeah, working with hundreds of scientists. Yeah. Over 500 trained by us across Africa to respond. Yeah. With the Welcome Sanger Institute, which is the biggest genomic facility in the world, we come in a strategic alliance to really use our fast response knowledge, yeah, but also have access to some of the biggest technology in the world to then help not only Africa to respond to epidemics, but many regions of the global south, like South Asia, Latin America, because one thing that we know is that pathogens and virus, they do not respect borders. So we have to identify and control them close to the, where they originated. Otherwise, we're going to be seeing other large epidemics and pandemics.
Mm -hmm. Now, Professor, you say that, uh, of course, COVID has receded somewhat, but uh, of late, it is a winter season. We've been speaking about the syncytial respiratory virus, the RSV, that many have told us to be cautious of, and p perhaps uh, many of those that are vulnerable must vaccinate. What are the stats looking like in so far as COVID is concerned? Because many people are still quite scared that we could see the numbers surge, it being winter, or it seems that on that front it's under control. So, so at the moment, there is no reason to be uh, yeah, concerned about another wave of COVID in South Africa. And, and South Africa has some of the most advanced uh, surveillance systems in the world that we collaborate, for example, with the NICD, our National Institute for Communicable Disease. So the same network that we had to do COVID, now we are doing the winter wave, what we call the respiratory pathogens. Yeah. We are just finishing our wave, as you highlight, of RSV that tends to affect mostly young children. And we are just to start our normally wave of influenza, uh, influenza A. And that's the one that we have to keep our eye on, especially as if there is multiple outbreaks of which, which some of your viewers may have heard of age five and one is an Asian influenza that's causing large amount of infections in mammalians in the United States, especially cows, yeah. And we're gonna be keeping an eye to some of these strains, which we do not expect to evolve for human transmission, but it's very important that we keep a very strong surveillance system. So if a new strain of influenza emerge, that we can act very quick as South Africa did during COVID. Professor, thank you very much for your time this evening. And again, congratulations on that honor. Professor Tulio de Oliveira is from UKZN.